classroom yeah tell me the english classroom or eltj english language teaching journal forum there many it it was my madam tell you about different journals she must have told you right forum for example f yes, o r u m forum forum yeah. has okay. anybody read any article from forum it's a very good journal published by the american embassy yeah right and english classroom which is our own journal our own journal our own journal now unmuted sir i have one doubt sir yeah tell me um sir in english forum um, i uh, i have chosen one article sir but um, in each every table of contents at last they have given try this uh, shall we take that sir no 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 you don't no, have no, to no, you don't have to try those activities try those activities try this we should not you just take, have to present no, a summary. summary present a summary okay sir um um shall i take that sir try this from try this that? no this not an article it's not an article, not an article. okay sir Sir, your audio is echoing, sir. Please. And I think everybody can hear me. Can you all hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, sir. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Clear, so, clear, clear. so you're not you're not presenting any activities. You're presenting the main summary of the article. All right. So that an expert has written. You will have to read it two three times, and then while reading, you can make notes. Then write a summary, and then you're going to present it orally. uh begin with the title you can tell the title of the article introduce the author's name and then where it was published name of the journal and then maybe the important points discussed in the article you can conclude by adding your own views like why did you select this article what did you learn from reading this article how did it help you all right what do you want to do next after reading this article maybe you can write another article Uh, in the same way you can write similar articles publish them in different journals right yeah so how did this activity help you you can reflect on that at the end that will be your conclusion and there is excuse a me, called... sir. yes tell sir, me excuse me sir sir uh, can we to select any article any uh, journal article it should be published in a journal in an english journal not a magazine yeah. article yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, there is a journal called ELTIF English Language Teachers Interaction Forum, published by Dr. Baskaran Nai. He was the president of this organization. It's published from Kerala, and Teacher Plus is published from I think Andhra or Telangana. Teacher Plus. This also has articles related to English language teaching. So your articles should be related to either English language teaching or teacher training, or about teacher education, right? Yeah. So anything related to ELT, ELT teacher education is fine. Not general education, right? Yeah. Sir, okay, so you, sir. Yeah. Sir, Tell just me. like reading logs, we have to present, sir. Correct. Yeah, that's right. Just, not just the reading log is different. Reading log is different. I have given you the template. All yes. Right? You have to, yeah, but uh, reading an article is different. In an article, for example, if you're reading an article about teaching grammar in in an in inductive way for example teaching grammar in a in communicative way then you have to read understand the argument made by the author what is the argument presented in the article if it is a research based article then maybe you have to present the data all right so whatever i'm going to discuss today is about research doing classroom research most of the articles are research based which means they have got research questions there is some data in the article and the data is analyzed and they are sharing their findings right so all that you have to present in your session that is article presentation presenting the gist of the article <coughs> okay right now what i'll do is yeah we will maybe reading log thank we'll you. discuss in the next class yeah thank you we will look at reading in the next class so generally what i do is first class i talk about reading next class i discuss classroom research so today we are going to look at exploratory action research that's the topic i am going to share an article here okay this is an article i want all of you to please just tell me if it is opening are you able to open this article this is saved on my google drive i have shared it in no, the chat box no sir it's not opening Please try. It. I have shared the link in the chat box. Can you please try it? 
or else okay, I will share, share it to WhatsApp group, sir, so that you can see. I can share it in the WhatsApp group. Right now, I won't be able to do that. I can share it later. Uh, yeah, let me see. Let me see if I can share it in the WhatsApp group. Sir, please share WhatsApp group, sir. Sir, it's opening, sir. It's opening, sir, right? It's opening. Yes, it's opening, sir. The link which is given in a chat box is yeah. opening, sir. Yeah, good. Very good. Okay. One of you can share the link in the chat box if you can. I, I won't be able to do it right now. I need some time. I'll so you can share it in the chat box, no? Yeah, right, right. Try to open it and please read the article. Can you please read this article? I'll give you five minutes time to quickly go through the article. And then you have to tell me what is it about. Okay. You are now muted. Yes. You are now unmuted. Yes, tell me. You are now muted. We are using a mobile phone, sir, so that it is not possible for us to use. Very small letters. Very small letters. Okay, have a quick look. It's not a see, very big article. It's an article written by a school teacher. Just browse through it. Have a quick look. Skim through the article and tell me what is it about. It will help in your Developing article. independent writing in English class. Yeah, yeah. Sir? Yes, yes, read it, read it. Yeah, I'll give you five minutes time. Please read it silently. And okay. then you should, try, yeah. you, should, you should try to summarize it. You should try to present a summary in your own sentences. Yeah. Right. It's shared in the WhatsApp group. Good. Thank you so much. Yeah. Two of them have already shared it in the WhatsApp group. Yeah. Good. Is everyone on mute or everybody's can't on I mute. hear anything? Yeah, yeah okay. everybody's on mute. You're supposed to read read the article. Yes. do interventions so before you do action research you have to explore you have to do an exploratory study find out the reasons look at the problem from multiple points of view that is the first stage exploratory research second stage is getting into action that is action research all right good carry on next please Anurag. yes sir yes sir That's, uh, in the beginning the teacher it's an action, action research as you have said sir and uh, in the beginning, they were asked to write uh, some free writing, mm -hmm. and there were some obstacles. Uh, they were not used to that kind of uh, writing, and mm -hmm. uh, like searching answers from the given book and so on. And so the teacher understood what could be the reason and found uh, some reason. I mean, uh, by studying and observing the teachers and students who have become successful, and by studying journals, mm -hmm. I think uh, she could have found some ways to monitor the problem right. and then next to that following some methods they were allowed to free writing by giving uh, and then uh, by giving proper guidelines supervising them continuously and showing pictures giving data required uh, where and when necessary and they were allowed to do that in the final stage sir okay very good very good yeah anyone else what do you understand by reading this yeah anyone else Sir, do yeah. Sir, hello. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sir. Mm -hmm. So the teacher uh, 
find an issue with the uh, writing writing sir uh, first uh, um, he wanted to know the reasons why the like uh, as we have discussed earlier like uh, yeah. english language corner like those activities are provided likewise yeah. we can improve their language and we give more exposed to the language good yeah good very good very good yeah that's right so i think many of you are doing activities now if you have to convert these activities into a research study so that's what i'm going to talk about actually yeah so many of you do activities you give them tasks you give them project work you do lots of things but when you call it a research study you have to analyze all these systematically whatever activities you conduct whatever tasks project work you give you should be able to document them one is documentation all right keeping a systematic record and then analyzing the effect of these activities you're doing activities but what is its effect on students how is it helping is it helping them at all what is the improvement made in students language acquisition for how are they acquiring language what is the impact of all this on the students so that analysis part i think is missing that is called maybe you can call it qualitative analysis so so what skills do you need to acquire in order to do such classroom based research studies what do you think teachers need to acquire what skills do you need to acquire to become classroom researchers as teachers you're doing lots of activities now if you turn the table and play play the role of a researcher if you put on the hat of a teacher researcher a teacher doing research in his or her classroom all right then what skills do you need to acquire to do a systematic study can anybody post in the chat box or even on your acquiring screen? acquiring data sir okay good you should be able to collect data you should know how that to is. collect data good then and analyzing the data how to analyze data correct so it's not enough if you collect data if you collect lots of activities you should know how to analyze it you may have test scores mark students have scored in their exams but how to analyze it interpretation of the data is important sir what is it interpretation of the data very good you should know how to interpret the data you have analyzed how to action plan sir you should go with an action plan you have to make an action troubleshooting plan. Yes. Sir, yes. In the beginning, we have. What is the troubleshooting? The I identify the problem. Very good. <laughs> First of all, I think you should you should be able to identify a genuine problem in the classroom, all right, yes. or a significant problem. What is the problem that that is significant? You should be able to identify a problem, and then maybe you should be able to. Yeah. Then what do you think? What are the other skills you have to acquire? tools and techniques in university yes yes tell me find uh, reasons we better have uh, the computer knowledge as well to make the reports ready to make reports right that's right maybe if you're typing it out then you need to have computer skills uh, but otherwise i think if you're talking about doing research then you should be able to think of appropriate tools required for data collection somebody has put in the chat tools and techniques of data collection that's it methods of data collection and you should know how to observe okay observation how to identify the prob problems of the students okay right right okay and more importantly anything else any bells we need to really think okay. innovative sir every time uh, we are copying from the previous uh, sources whatever uh, the earlier analysis rather than blindly copying that we need to be really innovate to uh, find any new solutions for the trouble i believe <laughs> good good that's right that's right yeah yeah so teaching 6 7 periods in a day all right and we can find time oh, another skill is time management i know surya prakash says time is very difficult to it's difficult to get time find time with 6 7 periods in a week so time management is another skill do you do it as a separate activity do you do research as a separate is it a separate entity is it a separate activity or do you manage it with your regular teaching and learning so how do you manage time a good researcher should be able to manage time this is very very important time management skill if you are able to integrate research into your teaching 
that will be the best thing but how do you do it is a, is a question so whatever you do on a regular basis the teaching learning hub that happens the activities you design try to look at it from a researcher's point of view how is it helping my students how am i growing in the process all right how is it benefiting both the students and teach if you are able to look at whatever you do look at it from a researcher's point of view take activities as data or test scores look at test scores as data raw data baseline data try to analyze it make interpretations so that is so doing anything systematically reflecting on it you are actually reflecting on what you are doing that is research so if you are able to integrate both teaching and research then i don't think you will have uh, time management issues but that's a very important point that you have raised right good and the other important skill is you should be able to frame research questions that nobody talked about framing research questions what is the what is most important is you should be able to frame questions related to your research topic it's not just saying students have problems with writing that is a statement or you have to convert that into a research question now now when you say writing writing is a vast area right what exactly in writing should be able to define it narrow down your focus make your question very specific you can't say my students have not acquired english language no and your research topic cannot be for example my students are not interested in learning english so what do you mean by interest how do you know they are not interested in english so you have to narrow down the topic and frame research questions so once you have identified the problem you should be able to frame questions and accordingly you should be able to collect data so if you look at neha khan's report for example you will see how she has done all this very systematically she begins with her research questions how can i motivate my students to write independently in english so very specific writing independently in english that's her main research question and her sub questions are what activities do i use to engage students in writing what activities have i been using to engage them in writing what are the activities that are preferred by my students what different methods can i use to promote writing what are the different ways of instructions that can be used to develop structural writing skills so there are four sub questions so once your questions are framed then you can go about collecting data for example what activities do i use or what what activities have i used to engage my students in writing you are reflecting on what you have already done what activities have i done how did it help my students now what are the activities preferred by my students next question is i have done a few activities to improve their writing but i don't know whether it is helping them or not now what activities activities are preferred by my students you have to talk to your students understand their likes and dislikes whatever you do they may not like they may not show interest so what is interesting to them what is their preference what do they like about writing what do they not like about writing that is a second question third question is what different methods can i use to promote writing what else can i do what more tasks activities can i do to improve their writing what other activities different activities right that's your action plan right and the fourth yes so you have to collect data from from your own reflective diaries from your reflections what activities have i used for example if you have a record if you have any document you can look at that analyze it look at students workbook notebook try to analyze how they write and then talk to them what are their preferences that is data collection process data collection so she has collected data using her journals she has a habit of writing journals you have to reflect on your journals and then she has conducted interviews with students and the students progress right all right and then yeah so that so what you this is called this is actually called i'll yeah, go to the next slide so this is actually called teacher research i hope all of you can see this slide teacher research right i'll make it full screen so teacher research is research initiated and carried out by teachers into issues of importance to them in their own work 
Now somebody said we are compelled to do action research. If you are compelled to do, then I won't call it teacher research. If you are forced to do action research, then that is not real research. There should be a necessity to do research. You should feel the need to do it. Nobody can compel you to do it. You are not writing a report for my sake or for others' sake or for some uh, award recognition sake. All right. You should feel a genuine need for. solving your classroom problems so it is research initiated by teachers and carried out by teachers into issues of importance to them in their own work so you have to identify important issues that you are concerned with all right and then that's one definition and another definition is research done by teachers into issues which concern them all right issues which which you are concerned about which you are worried about So I'm not forcing topics on you. I'm not asking you to do research on writing or reading. You have to identify the issues, and then so maybe because of this pandemic, school closure, and all that, you're facing huge challenges in the classroom. You can reflect on that, and then maybe talk to students, listen to their voices, and then think of an action plan how best you can help them remedy the issues. so teacher research is addressing questions that arise from your practice by gathering data analyzing it and sharing what you find right addressing questions or issue that arise from your own practice and how do you address those questions addressing questions is addressing research questions answering those research questions by gathering data so your data should be related to your research questions then you try to analyze the data and share your findings with other teachers so this is one of the definitions given by dr richard smith and next is there are three types of research that we can talk about so one is called action research which many of you i'm sure are familiar with the second type is called exploratory research or exploratory practice or you can also call it reflective research reflective practice and the third one is called exploratory action research right so when we say action research what we do is we plan to the, yeah the, i mean let's look at action research so action research is we plan for a change in action research we plan for a change we want to bring some change in the classroom and then we act so we get into action and then we observe and reflect on it share our findings So in action research, we immediately jump into action, conduct a pre-test, do some activities, conduct a post-test, and then share your report. That is action research. Whereas exploratory research is you plan to explore, planning to explore an issue. What is the issue? What is the problem? What do I want to focus on? And then you explore. to gather evidence for example when you say my students are not able to write independently that may be your assumption it may not be true with all the students maybe a few of them are struggling to write independently so you are trying to understand the problem better by gathering evidence so if you say my students are not able to write independently in english then how do you know my question will be how do you know that where is the evidence to say they are not able to write you have to look at their notebook analyze their writing and show me evidence that is called exploration then evaluate like with evidence so how many of them are facing this problem is it the whole class is it the majority of them or a few of them you have to evaluate with evidence so why explore before taking action why should you do exploratory research before getting into action research because we need evidence which will help you understand solve a problem or puzzle better if you say for example my teachers don't show interest in english classes we need evidence how do you know they are, they, they are not showing interest do you have any recordings do you have uh where is what activities did you conduct right otherwise and we need to understand clarify probe view alternatives before plunging into action you need to understand the problem better you need to clarify for yourself for example if you say my students find it difficult to read 
So you have to understand the problem better. What is reading? You have to clarify for yourself. Are you talking about reading aloud or is it reading silently? Right? If you are at the exploration stage, you have to understand the problem from multiple points of view. From student's point of view, from your own point of view, and then also from the literature point of view, like what is reading? You may say in class 9, they are not able to read. So what is reading? Are you talking about reading aloud in 9th standard? Then I won't say this is a topic for exploratory action research. They should have actually, they should have practiced reading aloud in earlier classes. Right? So, so you need to understand the problem better. And the need for a baseline, that is to compare after with before. You should have, you should have baseline data and also endline data. Right? Okay. So, in exploratory action research, I am actually interested in the third type of research that is called exploratory action research. What we do is, we explore the problem, understand the reasons, find out how many students are facing this problem, and then we plan for a change. We prepare an action plan. Then we do action research. We observe, we reflect, and share our findings. That is, it's a combination of exploration and action. And the stages are like this. In exploration, what we do is yeah, plan to explore, explore, analyze and reflect. All right. And then get into action research. Plan, act, observe and reflect. So these are the stages. Uh, so th these are the key stages involved in exploratory action research. You identify an issue or a puzzle or concern, then frame research questions, and then plan ways to explore it. Explore and understand the issue better, and then design an action plan for intervention. Carry out your action plan, think of data collection tools and methods, then reflect on your study, on your action research, gain insights, share with others, and then modify your practice as a result. So that is important. As a result of all this, you should be able to bring some change in your classroom. You should be able to modify your own practices. And then observe what other issues emerge. So you may begin with students' problems to read and then understand the problem better, design an action plan, and then do activities related to reading, right? And share your findings. Then practice, make some changes. And then look at other problems. All right, so teacher research will continue. It's, it's never ending, actually. You're looking at everything from a research point of view. So if you have too many concerns, if there are too many issues, problems in your classroom, then you should use this particular criteria. Select a problem which is manageable, something that you can manage, some study that you can do in three to four months of time. If you say, for example, students... Attendance is low in my school or students don't come to school regularly. Then you have to ask yourself, can I manage this problem? Is it within my hands or is it a larger systemic issue? Do we have to tackle it as a team? All right, yeah. So if it is beyond your hands, then you won't be able to do much about it. Maybe the school should, all, all the teachers should get together, discuss and then think of some strategies. So when you do classroom-based research like this, you should be able to manage it. It should be manageable in terms of time, in terms of the seriousness of the issue. And then is it an urgent issue? Does it need immediate attention? If you say, for example, my 10th standard students are not able to write legibly, their handwriting is bad, not neat. I would say that's, that doesn't need immediate attention. 10th standard, maybe you should focus more on their studies, the exams, not on handwriting. So it's not an urgent issue. Significant. Is it a significant problem? Is it really, really bothering you? Is it bothering their bothering their study, bothering the students? Is it a major issue or is it a minor problem? Right? That is an so manage the problem should be manageable or it should require urgent attention, it should be significant problem, and you should be able to engage yourself completely. You should be able to involve yourself completely in the research. All right? Nobody is forcing you to do it. 
So you should be passionate about doing it, and you should uh, find out ways and means of doing it in terms of time, resources, right? And only if you are able to engage yourself, you can complete this cycle, research cycle, like exploration, then action, right? So examples of evidence, for example, where do you begin? For example, you, if you say my students are not able to write independently, then where do you get evidence or data these are the sources of data your reflective writing by students if students write reflective journals reflective notes you can read those notes analyze and understand the problem or your own written reflections notes or your journals classroom journals classroom diaries can give you lots of insights or a critical friends notes about your lesson if your friend your colleague observes your classroom make some notes you can talk to each other notes will help you to decide on the problem get some data so classroom observation notes feedback by your colleagues or other trainers your officers block level trainers right notes or recordings of interviews with individuals you can conduct interviews with individuals record them listen to the recordings this will also help you in your data collection or you can prepare a questionnaire so one of the research skills you have to acquire is preparing a questionnaire if you want to do a classroom based research study you should know how to prepare a questionnaire and then are you able to i am sure yeah, you are able to see the slides right are the slides visible yes sir yes yes correct yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. all right yes so you should be able to prepare a questionnaire collect responses from students their parents other teachers or you can also look at students work or performance on tasks critically their written work or recordings or you can critically analyze your lesson plans how how did you write your lesson plan where is the time given for students you're saying they are not able to write independently so what time what how much of time is given them for writing are you have are you conducting activities that encourage them to do independent writing in the classroom do you give any feedback in the lesson plan where 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 is the time given for your students to write to give feedback for editing and all that so analyze your lesson plans critically reflect on that that's also data source of data evidence or pictures of your classrooms or whatsapp group discussions pictures will speak thousand words for example yeah or recordings you can record your lesson lesson for 10 15 minutes audio or video recordings listen to them watch the video recordings try to analyze it critically and see what is happening in your classroom who is talking all the time right if you analyze your classroom maybe you will realize so it's is a teacher who talks most of the time so do the students get opportunities to practice uh, speaking do they get opportunities to use language right you can yeah that is what a researcher should do collect evidence so okay so these are uh, some some points related to doing exploratory action research now what we will do is yeah, any questions anybody do you have any questions at this stage so what do you think what do you think do you think you will be able to identify a major significant classroom problem frame some research questions and then collect data will you be able to do that what do you think no well, we should be able to do it sir yeah provided uh, sufficient time is given to us because that is going to give a permanent solution yeah. for the problems the students are facing it is uh, very important i believe yeah that's right yes yeah anyone else yeah what do you think what do you think about doing this kind of study in the classroom is it okay just to go on teaching complete the syllabus and then get some good marks in the exam students get Uh, a plus A or distinction in exam, but not able to do anything on their own. So, what do you think? Is it? It helps the teacher to diagnose the exam it's problems. A, it's helpful to teachers, sir, to yeah, overcome the issues them. what we face right. in our classrooms. Yes, that's right. And it helps. To, and it helps to make our uh, target group self-reliant and uh, uh, expected to achieve their goal, sir. Yeah. that's right it helps yes problem rectify the issue students but only on that it helps in developing communication skills 
Okay, right. It is so it is helpful to what is the next step? Sir. Yeah. What is the next step? I think. What is your next step then? If it helps, sir. If it is sir, useful, submission, sir. Is, yes, someone submission. Tell it is. It is. It is not only helpful for our classroom instructions, but also it helps us to improve our professional life as well as our personal life too. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yes, it's a. Very, it's actually this is your professional development. If you're able to bring some change in your classroom based on your reflection, based on your research, that is professional development. You're looking at the. You're looking at problems from a different point of view. Actually, not stating them as problems, but trying to. rectify those problems trying to address those problems and nobody can come and help you in your classrooms you are the best person to solve your classroom problems yes sir yes sir yes so here is a short video i'm going to play a short video now all right i want you all to watch the video and tell me what did this particular teacher do what did he or she do classroom research yes i'll i'll share a short video now one second yes Oh, no, not this. Okay, I'm going to share a short, share an external video. Okay, just for five minutes, you'll watch this and reflect on the video. Oh, this video URL is not supported. Oh, it says it's not supported. Okay, one second. Share an external video. okay this video is supporting right one second sir share. better to share link sir video link i link I'll, i'll share i'll share i just want to play the video once all right then i'll share the... thank you sir okay is it audible Is it audible? Yes, sir. It's audible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Now it is. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, Sri Kanthapur District, for providing me this wonderful platform? of this 30 day clt program at the premier risc south bangalore and i'm privileged enough and glad to be here in front of you now to present my classroom based exploratory research for the context that my students are reasonably doing well at writing and they speak reasonably well but as compared to written literary activities when they are asked to come forward to perform oral presentation literary activities they are quite sir it is not audible sir very rigid and very very scary so it is very much audible sir please mute yourself i have my research questions for the for this research the main question is how can i inculcate guide and develop oral presentation skills among my students the sub questions under this is uh, how do your students respond how do your students respond in your school when they are asked to speak in front of small scale and large scale audiences question number 2 what is the general attitude among the students towards oral presentation as compared to literary activities in written form to the story writing or essay writing the third question is what are are what might be the reasons among the students Uh, for my stu uh, for not performing in oral presentation skills uh, so well and the final and the fourth question is what are the effective strategies do you suggest to my students and to me to improve or develop speech making skills optimally friends to explore this issue i have approached the data collection methods both quantitative and qualitative At towards exploration i have consulted various elt experts and teachers in the state of andhra pradesh and asking these questions and i got certain inputs over here which i will cover a little later and i have approached the students in form of google forms 
and recorded their voice scripts. When I happy to ask them, students, what are your problems while making speech in front of audience? They said uh, we feel very scary. Uh, we go for uh, we go in search for words, and it, because of our Telugu medium, we have that mother tongue influence, and we feel shy and. In order to remove the tongue tightness and to brush their language, uh, provide print-rich environment and focus on language games which are very helpful. So just a minute activities and making them uh, speak a short uh, one or two minute speeches like that. So lack of words start with vocabulary, basic expressions and grammar. These are the uh, lacking factors among the students they said and no exposure to phonics. So phonological interfaces and the in, in, uh, inventories should be there and individual attention is required because uh, focusing on the meritorious students and uh, leaving the students who are not taking part actively that is also leading to the tongue tightness. So make some paid group activities, group activities for flourishing that uh, uh, communication skill. Finally, focus on functional value uh, rather than structure which is very important. We don't uh, focus on grammar much, but uh, make them speak somehow in short sentences, make use of imperatives for that matter. Engage in conversations are uh, some interesting topics that they like. My favorite teacher, my favorite place, my favorite uh, uh, book, my favorite hero, etc. like that. That will be very helpful to engage them into smaller conversations and that will make them subconsciously they will lead to that uh, newspaper reading in assembly and making uh, some small kids uh, uh, skits for all occasions. Use every occasion at school to make them speak and actively engage in groups. Uh, while I anal analyzed all the inputs over here, I got uh, some very interesting findings and observations to the effects. Like usage of technology, the digital lab should be ICT enabled where you can go for phonological interface and inventories. Those phonic drills will help them to use softwares like Pratt CD-ROM Recorders
purpose.